Hey Reese, today I am here to share with you guys how we fit three car seats in our Subaru Ascent. There's just some details I want to go over first so you guys know everything ahead of time. First of all, excuse my transitions, obviously I'm outside. However, I also want to mention that we have captain's chairs. So obviously this is a lot easier than if you had a bench seat. To give you specifics about our car, we have a 2019 Subaru Ascent with captain's chairs. We also have a five-year-old daughter, a four-year-old daughter, and an eight-month-old daughter. So our eight-month-old daughter is in an infant carrier right now. However, she will be in a convertible car seat soon and I will say that that really won't change her placement at all as long as everything fits correctly. Second of all, our oldest daughter is in a high back harness booster seat. Once she grows out of the harness limits, we can just use it as a high back booster. And then lastly and the most complex is our middle daughter, Remy. Now, I filmed at three different points to make this video. Once when she was rear facing in a convertible car seat, a second time when she was forward facing in a convertible car seat and now that she is in the exact same seat as our oldest daughter so a high back harness booster seat the reason is that for the longest time until she was around three and a half we kept her rear facing even in the third row and then she started complaining of lower back pain we turned her around and that remedied the issue however for the next few months we noticed that she was having trouble with some leg room back there because the captain's chair has to be pushed entirely back to fit the infant seat so to give her more leg room we switched her into the high back harness booster you can do your own research but when i consulted with a cpst they told me that there was no difference between a forward-facing convertible car seat and a high back harness booster seat. Basically safety levels would be exactly the same. So for that reason I was comfortable moving her into that and that's kind of where we are right now. I will be linking everything that we have down below, the car seats that we have, and also more specifics if my husband thinks that there's anything else that you need to know about the car. Now when we were looking at configurations for our car seat, especially when Remy was still in a convertible one, we consulted with the car seat lady. She had a little diagram of what was okay versus what wasn't. With each car, what you're able to do latch-wise or even with seatbelt installs will vary from car to car and even seat to seat, especially if you have a bench configuration. Even with captain's chairs, I thought it'd be really easy and a no-brainer and everything seems simple to me. Super glad I checked our diagram because not everything goes. So I would highly recommend reading your car manual because most of the time they also have a recommendation for the car itself and then also checking out the car seat lady for your specific car. So with that being said, I thought I would just show you how we typically get in and out of the car with the girls because my biggest question is, is how we get the big girls all the way in the back and being able to buckle them in. I will say that before we bought this car, that was one of my stipulations. That was something that mom was not willing to budge on and that we made sure to make the budget for was captain's chairs. I felt like moving forward, they would fit our family better in the years and years to come. And I also just wanted to make things as easy as possible when we were loading three kids into the car. The first clip will be Remy rear facing in a convertible car seat along with the other girls. The second clip will be Remy forward facing along with the other girls. And the last clip will be right now in time what we do as of May 2020. So let's go ahead and just get into that. Okay, so this is me showing you guys the setup for a rear facing in convertible, forward facing, and also an infant car seat all in the back of a Subaru Ascent with the captain's chairs. So right here, we do have an empty captain's chair. Over there is the base for the baby's infant carrier, obviously. And then you just pull this little lever over here to the side and push it forward. And then you've got the older girls in the back here. Our almost five-year-old Sophie sits in this seat right here. And then our three and a half-year-old Remy sits in that convertible car seat back there. Now moving this seat forward is exactly how we let each girl in. Remy will walk to her convertible car seat, get herself kind of situated, the buckles as best as she can do. She really can only do her chest clip. She tries real hard with the crotch ones though. And then Sophie can pretty much buckle herself, so she gets situated as well. And then we will climb back here, make sure that they are all tightened up. Straps are how they're supposed to be all the good stuff. And there is more than ample room to do that back here. We would have shown you guys with everybody getting in and adjusting and all that stuff, but the girls are already asleep and we're actually gonna turn Remy forward facing because she's been complaining of back pain. She is very tall for her age. She is in the upper 90 percentiles and we just think that she'd be more comfortable 
forward facing so she can sit more upright and not at a recline. I know it looks like it's pr sitting pretty straight forward up, but it is still got a pretty good recline on that. And obviously the baby's car seat would go right there. And I also wanted to point out that the convertible car seat is just touching the seat. It's not resting. It's not being supported by the seat or anything like that. So your car seat can be touching the chair in front of it, but it cannot be resting. The chair cannot be pushing on it or supporting it or anything like that. And with this setup, everybody's car seat is exactly compliant with the owner's manual and also the infant car seat fits right there perfectly as well and we did want to leave this chair open not only so we could push it forward and give ourselves the most room to work with the getting the girls situated when they're back there but also obviously to utilize one of the seats in our car which has been really nice having a newborn you know, sometimes I just want to sit back here, make sure everything's okay, and keep an eye on her. And it's been really nice to do that. And I'm also sitting in front of the girls. I will say the smaller the children, the more you may want to have them enter through here and walk back. Then push the seat forward and buckle them in. Just because it's a little bit difficult with this seat pushed forward for them to grab onto things to get them inside the car. Because it is a pretty steep step up but if you do have an older child there is a handle right here my girls just aren't really tall enough to utilize that quite yet and we actually do have quite a few headrests removed i wanted this one so i could see sophie and we also removed rummies as well and i think maybe even behind sophie's it just depended if it felt like it was a better view out of the back window or like with sophie's if her car seat you know, had the better install without the headrest. We just removed it and we actually store them right down there behind the other captain's chair. I know this isn't a very popular setup. A lot of people, if they have a rear facing and convertible, they'll put it right here along with the infant car seat and then, you know, one kid's just alone in the back. And I just wanted to show you that it is possible, at least with our car, these car seats that you can do this setup, have a free captain's chair and have ample space to get everybody situated. One of the biggest questions I got was how are we going to strap Remy in when she's rear facing? And I just wanna say that it is super simple the way we've been doing it. And also if you are tall enough, my husband can actually open up the rear gate and tighten her straps that way. We don't have a super long trunk, so you can reach easily back there. He is six foot and I could get up on my knees inside the trunk and also tighten her if you do not want to climb back here for whatever reason but yeah I just wanted to show you guys this possibility I'll show you the forward facing and how everybody gets in that way and that'll be that Okay, so this is real life, what the inside of our car looks like. As you can see right here is where Lexi still sits in her infant carrier. Now, whether it's one or both of us, somebody will come over and put Lexi in the car. If I'm by myself, I just have the girls go stand over by the garage and then I will go to the other side and open up this door. My husband is helping me today because obviously I'm behind the camera. So they are both in a harness seat, which means that we have to make sure that straps are straight and tight and everything else. Do you like your new seat a lot more, Remy? Yeah, I like it more than the back one. Yeah, is it more comfy? Yeah, this one's more comfy. Mark has plenty of space to stand up, bend over, do what he needs to to buckle in, even Remy over here on the far side. He is six foot average build so plenty of room for him there's plenty of room for me as well being a plus size mom you can see violet as our fake lexi because she is napping right now But yeah, that's everything on how we set up our three car seats in our Subaru Ascent. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.